Volkswagen has been going through some kind of a renaissance lately. I mean, <laughs> I mean, obviously after the Dieselgate scandal, a car company has to reinvent itself. More importantly, it has to reduce costs because right now Volkswagen owes a lot of money to a lot of people. It also has to become a lot greener and that's what it has been trying to do. We've got new electric vehicles like the ID4 and it's been really focusing on mass selling products like SUVs, things like the Atlas and the Tiguan and the Atlas Cross Sport. They're all American made, they're very big and they're all not Volkswagen. I have not been a fan of Volkswagen's latest offerings. I just find that the company is losing its way. Yes, they're probably recording better profits and they're selling more SUVs than ever, but I'm missing the old German soul, the European flavor that Volkswagen would bring to the automotive industry. There is still one vehicle within its lineup that's still properly a Volkswagen. And that car is the Golf GTI. If you head over to the Clavis Corner website and look for Golf GTI reviews, you're probably going to see some sentences that talk about it being one of the best automobiles in the world. It's no secret that I'm in love with the seventh generation Golf GTI. In my book, this generation Golf will go down in history as one of the best ever made. And I'm not the only one who thinks this. If you go read other reviews of this vehicle, they're pretty much all positive. Now, the reason why this generation GTI is so good is because Volkswagen actually went through a lot of efforts to making it great. It has a fantastic chassis, great suspension, its interior is well put together, it's comfortable, it's quick enough, it's fun to drive, it looks properly good. And one cool fact about this car is that its entire chassis and suspension dynamics were calibrated by the same engineer who put together the Porsche 911 GT3 RS. How many hot hatchbacks on the market can brag about that? Not many. Now this is really the last run for the 7th generation Golf or the MK7. Next year in 2022, the MK8 will arrive here in North America and sadly the Golf is now dead. It'll be replaced by some weird crossover called the Taos, but there is still some hope. We're going to have the GTI and the R. I'm afraid that Volkswagen is going to mess it up, that the next Golf 8 is not going to be as good as this. Recent Volkswagen vehicles have not been quite fantastic. They've been more mediocre than ever. I'm afraid there's going to be some cost cutting in the next GTI. We're going to have to wait until next year for that. But until we get there, we can all rejoice that the MK7 is still here and still properly great. So I went through my way to book one one last time. I brought it here on a track to give it one last hooning and rediscover what is arguably the best hot hatchback in history. So this is actually the first time I drive a Golf GTI with a manual transmission. All the other versions I've driven were equipped with the dual clutch 7-speed unit, which was fantastic, but I really wanted to try the manual one. Now the reason why I couldn't have access to it is because automotive journalists don't have a reputation of driving very well, and in the past, <laughs> there's a story here in Quebec about an automotive journalist blowing up the manual transmission on a Golf R. So Volkswagen Canada decided to just remove them from the fleet. This is the first time in about five years that we've had a manual Volkswagen here um, in the press unit. So I jumped on the occasion right away because six-speed manual is the way to go, in my opinion, in a Golf GTI. I'm out here on the San Air Super Speedway. It's not the cleanest track out here. It's a bit bumpy and old and withered, but it still allows me to push this thing to its limits. And the limits in the GTI are fantastic because not only can you really explore them, you can push this thing to the tip of what it can do and it will really talk to you. It will really communicate through its steering, its chassis, and its rear end what it's doing and what it wants to do. That's one of the beauties of this car. As the old saying goes, it's a lot more fun driving a slow car fast than a fast car slow. And this couldn't be more true than in the Golf GTI. Now, it's not exactly slow. I have 225 horsepower from a two liter turbocharged four cylinder and 258 foot pounds of torque. Those are proper numbers for a car of this size. It's front wheel drive. Of course, you can get the Golf R with all wheel drive, but I always, I've always preferred the GTI because of that. You can play with it a lot more. It's a lot more playful. There's just a bit of understeer with it. Lift off oversteer, which is fantastic. 
And the, the, the power delivery of this four cylinder is just impeccable. The manual transmission is precise and the level of playfulness is absolutely brilliant. What's also fantastic about the GTI and the way that it drives is that it's rock solid. It feels, it feels very high end. It feels German. It feels like I'm driving as a budget minded Audi. It doesn't, there, there's no sense of cost cutting in a Golf GTI, unlike a Jetta or a Passat or the new Arteon. I drove an Arteon last winter and honestly the build quality was less good than any Kia Stinger. Now there's a bit of sound enhancing going on in the cabin. What you're hearing now is not exactly the engine sound, it's Volkswagen's sound actor technology which enhances the four cylinder engine's note. But with a bit of fiddling and aftermarket tuning, apparently you can quickly remove that. The brakes are great on this car. This one is equipped with the Autobahn package, which gives it upgraded brakes. Oh, wow, I got leather seats as well. This is the funnest little car. I mean, I can just push this thing. I can flog it in a corner. I can, I can be sloppy with it. Even the worst of drivers, the worst automotive journalist can push this thing, go around a track quickly and have a lot of fun. Yes, it's front wheel drive. Volkswagen fitted the GTI with an electronically controlled limited slip differential. I'm not a fan of that technology. I prefer removing traction control, which is why it's, you know, it's, it's slipping a bit more and it's, it's, it's yearning for grip, but at least it's not cutting out power. I have all of the available power in this thing. And what's great is that there's mid range punch, but there's also, it will also rev. I mean, I'm hitting almost 180 kilometers an hour here in the straightaway in this hot hatchback. So a lot of fun to drive, but also comfortable. Look, I'm gonna tone these things down a bit. I'm just gonna let the brakes cool down. I'm gonna set this thing to its more casual, normal mode. Then in normal mode, well, it just becomes a golf again. It's a very unassuming, compact hatchback. Rock solid, super quiet. I love the build quality. I have a Fender sound system, which sounds fantastic. There's room back there for the kids and their gear. Another fun fact is that the seventh generation Golf is the most spacious compact car on the market. Even today, it's more spacious than a Honda Civic hatchback or a Mazda 3. It's also more spacious than some crossovers. We get more cargo space in a Golf GTI than a Hyundai Kona subcompact crossover. Now that says a lot. Why are people still buying crossovers when you can buy a compact car that has just as much cargo space and deliver this much fun behind the wheel? I don't get it. I don't understand the appeal of crossovers because there are some fantastic automobiles currently on sale. This is the case in point. The GTI, the seventh generation GTI is up there among the great. This is the queen of budget hot hatchback. Now in terms of performance, obviously a Civic Type R is a lot more precise. It's a lot quicker, it's more wild. But to live with on a daily basis, if you've got things like a family, you've got errands to do, you've got payments, you've got bill payments, you have a mortgage, you want a Golf GTI. It's sensible, it's not too expensive, it has just the right amount of power. It's cute, it looks pretty good in my opinion. I mean, everything's been said about the Golf GTI. And that pretty much wraps up the review of this car. Oh, perfect, absolutely perfect. Now Volkswagen, you need to listen to this very closely. Please don't mess up the MK8 GTI. So far I'm reading reviews from Europe and they seem to be quite positive, but in terms of chassis dynamics, in terms of weight distribution, in terms of just sheer fun to drive and cargo space as well, this is really, really one of the best vehicles currently on sale. Now I'm gonna to go to the Volkswagen dealership and order one before they're gone.